Thank you. And um, we are delighted to have the opportunity to come down and talk to you. Um, I'm thankful that Steve is here. We have a very engaged board um, that serves uh, with us right now. And um, it, uh, I didn't have to uh, ask twice for him to come. So uh, I, I really appreciate that. And I think that's important um, as an organization to know that we do have an active board and uh, a very supportive board. So that said, um, Steve is going to sure. make some comments. Yeah, um, I, as the chair said, my name is Steve Fournier. I'm the town administrator of Newmarket. That's my day job. And I'm also the chair of the board of directors of the HMA. I've been involved in the Municipal Association um, probably for about 10 years on the board and in various committees uh, in the organization. Uh, I've been <coughs> actively involved I mean, uh, um, just using the services for almost 20 years. I started out as an elected official in Summersworth during college and then went on to become a, a municipal manager. Uh, the Municipal Association, from my view, is a wealth of knowledge and a voice for our, our groups, our towns and cities across the state. Uh, not saying that just as a member of the board, I'm saying it also as a former elected official and also as an appointed administrative official. The amount of knowledge that the elected officials and appointed officials across the state receive from the organization is immense. A lot of it, people don't even realize they're receiving it from them, but they are. Um, what the Municipal Association is, is it was founded in 1941 as basically uh, an association of the cities and towns across the state to have a common voice in, the, in Concord. Uh, somebody who could represent all of us to the legislature and uh, state agencies when uh, municipalities had issues. Went along that way for many years, uh, till about the mid 80s. And that is when there was a issue when it came to insurance uh, coverage for municipalities. Uh, insurance at that time, companies at that time were dropping municipalities because of the fact that municipalities get sued a lot. Um, so the uh, liability insurance started dropping municipalities and they needed coverage. NHMA understood there was a void so they uh, Set up to the plate and started uh, up the uh, property liability trust pool. Basically, everybody pooled money together and paid out when there was claims against it. Shortly after, they started also the health trust in the same situation. Uh, that went along. There was three different boards for many years under the uh, umbrella of the NHMA. So there was the NHMA board, the property liability trust board, and the health trust board. In 2004. Uh, it was the decision of the three boards to merge into one entity as the local government center, which is the name that a lot of people may know as of right now. Uh, <coughs> after that, in about 2012 to 13, the NHMA never went away. NHMA was always there. It was always the group that was advocating for cities and towns. And probably about that time, it was noted that by some individuals that the NHMA was sort of losing its uh, identity in the LGC, and it was getting mixed up, and which a lot of people still do, um, and that it was time for a bit of a change. So last year, the change came through, and it was not only, it was already coming down the pike from uh, the entities itself, but it was pushed along a little faster through the regulatory uh, situation uh, to separate the boards. And the NHMA was spun off back into the entity that it was, and it's been since 1941, which is advocating for municipal governments across the state and educating municipal governments. Uh, the other two boards are separate. We are not involved with each other. We are all housed in the same building, just out of convenience at this point, because that's where we were. But the boards uh, don't meet. We, you know... Together. Together. <laughs> together. <laughs> Thank you. But we're not, you know, we're not a single board any longer. We're separate entities completely. Our board is made up of 21 individuals. I serve as chair. The city manager of Laconia serves as vice chair. He was originally the mayor of Dover. So we try to get uh, an appointed and elected official uh, to serve as chair and vice chair. It just happened to be that he switched positions in the middle. Uh, we also split the board pretty much between appointed and elected. Uh, we have a lot of selectmen, councilors, mayors, town, we have some town clerks, we have um, planners, economic development committee members, across the board, cross section of local officials that serve. Uh, we meet uh, monthly to do the, the business of the board 
and also to review what's going on in Concord. You know, what bills are coming up that are going to impact cities and towns across the state. And we also uh, get input from cities and towns across the state and say, hey, look, I don't know if you understand that this is going on. What can the, what can the Municipal Association do to help us? Uh, and, uh, above that, the staff also provides the infamous training that you hear. Right to know law sessions, budget uh, sessions. I know that was part of the discussion at your last meeting when I watched some of it. Uh, the, the planning law lecture series. Those are the things that I think a lot of municipalities take for granted, but that's that's done through the Municipal Association through the dues that are, are collected. Uh, if that wasn't there, there would be a void of where some of that education would be coming from. You'd probably have to pay your own, well, you have in-house counsel. Your in-house counsel would have to be going out every night and teaching every board about all these situations, and you know, he may not be an expert in everything. We try to get experts in for, you know, for most of all these topics. In-house staff can't be an expert on everything, so we bring in attorneys from other agencies or other organizations to help speak on things. So that's really what we are. We're a member-driven organization. Uh, Judy's going to talk more about uh, items that pertain more to Hampton than what some of the benefits that the town of Hampton has received from the Municipal Association. And then we'll be open for any questions. So turn it back over to Judy. Thank you. Um, the other, only other thing I would add to what Steve said is that we elect our board of directors um, at our annual meeting every fall. Um, there are candidates put forth that anybody who um, is in attendance at our annual meeting and notice goes out to every municipality that's a member can um, exercise a vote to uh, determine who's going to be on the board of directors. So there really is that. Um, across the state member involvement in that process. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just real quick, we also try to get members from all corners of the state. We, you know, we look and we say, well, you know, we have too many from the central part. Let's try to get some people from Coas County. Let's try to get some people from the seacoast or from over near Keene. We try to get a mix of the, the whole state's representative too. So what's in here, and I'm not going to go through it all because you certainly can take a look at it, but is um, a, an overview of or examples of some of the things that we do. Um, a couple of legislative bulletins from this year, one that dealt with, um, explains a little bit about what happened with the town clerk issue, because I'm sure that you've heard about that. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Another one um, talking about the pollution control exemption, because we were working again with Hampton representatives trying to change that. We also have our um, final legislative bulletin from last year. We are presently working on this year's, because the legislative session has ended. <coughs> and a court update where our attorneys have reviewed all of the court decisions that affect municipalities from the 2013 session. Um, and also a pamphlet, the letter that you probably saw, um, but just thought I would refresh everybody with that, um, responding to some of the things that were said at your deliberative session. Um, law lecture pamphlet, uh, information on that, and also an NHMA on demand training. Because your dues are over $15,000, you are able to um, have one of our attorneys come and do an, an, an on-demand training for anybody in town, whatever board it might be, whatever subject it might be, uh, preferably from a list of things that we uh, do the on-demand training about for no, or no fee. That is something that we do. Um, and charge uh, money to other municipalities that are interested in having that uh, done in their town. As I looked through um, the statistics in preparation for coming here, I was really pleased to see the level um, at which uh, Hampton uses the NHMA services. The legal advisory services, we have the two attorneys that are available to answer questions from different boards and officials and employees with uh, talking about questions within the scope of their responsibilities. Um, there were 23 inquiries in 2013 and in the years before that it averaged about 14 or 15 um, a year before that. I think that's great. Um, also having your in-house counsel because sometimes our folks have just a different perspective because we're hearing what's going on in towns around the state and we also have been able to work closely with your in-house counsel and provide that kind of information so that you're not only seeing what is going on perhaps in Hampton or the Seacoast area. 
Um, I know you talked at your last meeting about the budget and finance workshop, but you send people to that. Um, you send people to the law lecture series. Um, you sent one person to the moderator's workshop, but that makes sense because you only have one moderator, so that's, that's the good news. Um, you sent people to the local official workshops. Those are a series of workshops we do every spring, particularly geared to newly elected local officials, although we certainly have um, more experienced people come um, just to learn the latest changes and what's gone on um, in the legislature or the courts that are going to affect local government. Um, and you sent five people to our conference last year. Um, so that, uh, that I think, is, is great. You're using the services. We run a series of webinars, and you have had attendees at, at virtually every webinar we have run this year. I don't have last year's statistics. Last year was the first year we did it, and we treaded kind of hesitantly into the world of webinars because we're used to more face-to-face -face communication but the response has been great and um, it is helpful for us because we can get out to a lot of people without leaving the office and we can get a lot of people learning the information um, without having them leave their offices so we're getting um, pretty good at that um, so I think that you are your, your folks are doing well here, and we are really pleased to, to see that. Um, I hate going to a municipality when um, people maybe aren't paying enough attention to what is offered. And I know my own town for many years did not, and now with some new folks on board, we are getting a lot greater participation, because that's what we're there for. You get um, copies of, or electronic copies of the legislative bulletin. We do that every week during the legislative session to keep you apprised of what's going on. Um, you get, I believe it is 20 complimentary copies of the Town and City Magazine. We do that every two weeks. That is a more comprehensive publication with in-depth articles on various subjects um, and um, other kinds of information. Uh, we also have a, an electronic newsletter, which I did, that goes out to thousands of people, so I did not look to see the, the distribution list on that. Um, it's called Newslink. That is, that goes out every two weeks, and it really is our source of info, our, our method of updating people on the workshops that we're doing, um, things that are coming up. We uh, spread the word on programs that others are doing that are of interest to municipal officials. So that is really our um, most, um, most frequent and, and best uh, used, I think, opportunity to get information out to people on what's happening. So I think that, um, that we are really pleased with how, um, how you're using the services. I know that um, one of the things that was talked about at your deliberative session <coughs> was um, the City of Manchester not being a member and having done just fine. And I'm really pleased to report that the City of Manchester, in the budget that it just passed a couple weeks ago, um, approved rejoining the Municipal Association. Um, we think that kind of thing is critical because, particularly in our legislative efforts, the broader the voice we can speak with, the better opportunity we have to pass legislation that is going to be beneficial to municipalities. And um, I know this might come as a shock, but to stop legislation that is not going to be beneficial to <laughs> municipalities and to fight um, unfunded mandates and things like that. So um, I, uh, I'm happy that, that they're coming back, but that's not to say that we don't value absolutely every municipality that's a member. And we have all now but two municipalities that are members, so that's that's a pretty good number from what I hear from my colleagues around New if, England. For an anecdote from Manchester, I think Shirley hit home was um, we were told at the board of directors meeting last week that a, a, an employee of the city needed legal an illegal opinion, legal advice, and called up to you know the legal department and somebody they know and said, well, you know, I got a question about this. Can you help me? He goes, I can't. You're not a member. So that's one of the things that people don't realize. They, they just assume that it's always going to be there. And um, I think that, that really hit it home for them is that one of the things that they needed was that they don't have that um, safety net there of a second opinion or something if they have some questions. And I hear that so often that, you know, it, you know when I was in uh, Northampton, 
you know, there was some concerns over it, but one thing they always said is that we didn't want to leave the municipal association because of the training and the, the, the legal advice that they could get and the, the, the savings that they had from that. So. And I think the other thing that um, Manchester folks were concerned about um, was that, at least in terms of the legislative policy process, um, if you're not a member, you don't have a seat at the table. You don't have a right to come to the policy conference and vote on what the policies are that we are going to pursue. And um, that you know that can can work against you. I know that the town of Auburn was having issues with Manchester on um, Manchester Waterworks property that was located in Auburn, and they brought a policy forward, and um, the membership adopted that policy because Manchester wasn't a member. If Manchester had been a member, that probably would have been a policy that would not have been adopted because it would have had us pitting members against each other, and we don't step into those situations. The policy process is ongoing now. We have three committees that um, meet to dis discuss different issues, a planning and environmental quality, a general government uh, and a governance committee, and um, finance and administration. They review policy proposals that uh, folks from municipalities have put forth and issues that the m members of the committees themselves have and the policies that we've had in the past. And they create a set of recommendations. Each committee creates a set of recommendations. That is done, and the hard copy went out to every municipality today um, of those recommendations. We will be emailing those out to um, all kinds of people, particularly boards of selectmen who, um, whose email addresses we have, because the next stage is anybody, any municipality who feels that something hasn't been covered can submit a floor policy. That has to be approved by the full board of selectmen. And then we get those out to everybody, and a policy conference is held um, September 26th. Every municipality who is a member gets to send a representative to that policy conference, and we always urge the governing body to review the policies and take a position on the policies and send their delegate with that information so that you make sure that your delegate is representing the interest of your communities. Mike, I think that you came to our last policy conference. Yes, did I you did. not? Yep. 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 So um, you know exactly how that works. And those. Whatever is adopted at the policy conference is what governs our advocacy efforts before the state house, um, or before the state legislature. So, so, so it's not a, you know, a group of people just making the decision. It's all the municipalities across the state that are making the decision what the municipal associations are advocating for. It's not, you know, I think five people sitting and say, well, this, these are the bills we're going to support or not support. It's a representation across the state. And if you don't come, and sadly you misspell, you may not be represented at the at the table at that situation. And at the policy conference, everybody's welcome. I mean, every community is allowed to have one member to come. So that's very important to send somebody. And Jim, I think you have some firsthand experience with that, working with Barbara yes. Reed um, on retirement reform. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with Dick Nichols on yep. that mm -hmm. as well. Um, working on some of the spiking issues, which would have cost. Um, just Hampton alone, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for uh, in spiking costs per uh, retiree or per um, per uh, public safety employee. So it's and that kind of thing is replicated across the state. But unless you have a group that can follow that and can bring in people from all over the state and cover all the different representatives, it's hard to get complicated subjects like that addressed in the legislature and um, and we really count on the local representatives who understand how it affects a municipality uh, like Jim to, to work with us on getting those things passed. So I guess if there's questions of us, it's, it's a good time as any to start asking us.